Hello, this is Roy Evans and welcome to Urban World News. And today we are having a conversation with Dr. Sharika Newman in reference to the coronavirus. As we know a lot of things are going on and there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of confusing information, a lot of things that folks don't know. And one of the things that we want to do here at the Jericho Broadcast Networks is make sure that our listeners and viewers and everyone across the diaspora has the correct information and things that they can do that will help curtail this and get us through this particular situation. Dr. Newman, hello, how are you doing today? I'm good, where are you? I am doing well. So before we get too deep into some of this stuff, I'm gonna jump into and let you tell the folks a little bit about yourself and who you are and your background uh, before we get into the questions. Okay, one thing I wanna start off with is that I am a proud Florida A&M graduate, Rattlers in the house. That's right. Um, that's how I actually met, talking about seeing you on a um, trip. We met at the airport on some trip that both of us were going on different directions. I am a palliative medicine physician. My specialty focuses on improving the patients with serious advanced illness. And at this point, a pandemic like the coronavirus is definitely considered a serious advanced illness. So we are tracking um, how this impacts our patient population at a national level in my field um, daily. Okay, wow. So, you know, you started off saying some of the things and let's let's kind of start off, um, I guess we'll look at the end of February. It's kind of when this thing really started to roll out and people were going. Tell us what you guys were hearing in the medical field and in your industry and what exactly was the the movement of this of this pandemic? Um, so I would say we became aware of it in January, you know, aware of it in December when it was just in China, um, and then more of it in January as it starts spreading and definitely hit the U.S. And of course, as it's become more widespread globally, not even just here in the U.S., um, we've of course seen increased numbers here in the United States. To date, we're at, you know, over 44,000 cases in 50, 544 deaths. And so, of course, it's now widespread um, as it's, you know, spread across the globe. One thing that we are fully aware of here in the United States is that we were definitely behind the ball on testing. Um, and so I, must, I have seen this week because the FDA approved private lab testing on Monday. This week, we've seen an increased number of positive cases because we have better testing availability. And so I'm not surprised that the numbers have really exponentially grown this week. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me ask uh, this question as, as, as we get into that. Can you give, let's, let's start off with some of the very basic stuff. Explain the term pandemic and what that means, because I don't think a lot of people understand the gravity of what that means. I mean, pandemic is that just that. It's widespread. It's everywhere. Um, which means that this particular virus or whatever is causing a pandemic is easily spread from person to person, from thing to person, whatever the spread. Right now we know that coronavirus is spread person to person. It's a droplet spread, um, meaning that if someone coughs or sneezes, that droplet from their mouth um, or nose, if it lands on your mouth, your nose, your eyes, you could very easily get virus. We also have newer data showing us that the coronavirus can live on surfaces. And so if you touch the surface and then touch your mouth or hands, I mean, your mouth or eyes or anything before washing, you can spread it. Um, and so that's why we've been promoting mitigation strategies like self-isolating or social distancing or self-quarantining. Um, if you believe you have the virus. And these things are very important, kind of bring the numbers down in this pandemic spread so that we are not looking at these numbers months later. Okay, great. So let's, again, try to move in some form of a, <laughs> of a pattern with this. Do this for me. Can you explain to people the, the symptoms? How do, you, how do you find out if you have this? How do you recognize because of course we've heard some of the things talking about the testing oh if you have a dry cough or if you have this, this flu-like symptoms but let's talk about the the actual transmission from person to person 
because there are some startling things that people really need to understand about how dangerous and how easily spread this situation is. So, you know, one thing that I want to get across is what we call asymptomatic carriers or vectors, meaning people that have the virus, have coronavirus, but are not symptomatic, but your cough and your sneeze or any sputum or mucus coming from your body has virus in it and can be spread to another person. Um, exposure to the virus does not necessarily, necessarily mean you will get infected or will have a positive coronavirus um, because we have healthcare providers that unfortunately are exposed regularly, but they don't convert to having a positive virus. So, so it's very important that one, if you are exposed, that you are mindful of your own body fluids, especially your mucus. Clean your surfaces, disinfect, wash your hands before you eat, wash your hands before you touch your face. All of those things will prevent the spread because you don't necessarily know if you're positive because you could be asymptomatic. A lot of the symptoms that we are seeing um, usually happening around day five, but as late as day 11, have been the fever, um, the draw, uh, and not really a lot of body aches, mostly fever, dry cough, and the severe symptom is the shortness of breath. So what we've been asking is that if you are sick, you should self-quarantine. Any upper respiratory symptoms, automatically self-quarantine for 14 days. If you become short of trouble breathing at rest or with any movement, you should definitely call your physician or call the coronavirus hotline and get in to see someone to get tested. At this point, we do not have a vaccine, nor do we have a medication to treat coronavirus. There are some trial studies being done and some anecdotal things that have been talked about as far as treatment, but nothing definitive. Okay, wow. So there are, there are a couple of things in that statement and that, that you just said that I really need to, to, I want to unpack and I want to make sure that people understand. The first thing that you said that we want to make sure that people get is that you can have this virus and not be symptomatic from anywhere from four to 11 days. Correct. And and I mean, if, if just the, the average person thinks about how many people they come in contact with on their regular life over the course of a week and a half. Correct. And, that you can pass this to. This is because like I have friends now who are like, oh, they call the quarantine. I'm not staying in the house. I'm like, dude, are you not listening to these people? So that's the first thing that people need to realize before right. you are even symptomatic, you could have this and spread it around to people. So let's, let's look at that and unpack it. It's, the, it's, and I want to say, boy, especially our mature population, they are the ones 60 and above are the ones that are at highest risk for morbidity and mortality from coronavirus. And I think it behooves us, the young and the healthy, the non-vulnerable population to protect the vulnerable patients. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I think we really need to unpack and make sure that people understand was the last thing that you just said. At present, there is no antidote or no vaccine or cure for this virus? No. Wow, that is, um, wow, that's just, you know, that that's yeah. one of those things. That there's that's really not a whole lot swallow, much to say. Right, right. There's, that's a tough pill to swallow. And right now we are doing what we do, you know, we're actually for most viruses and that most respiratory viruses, and that is symptomatic treatment. I mean, our common cold doesn't have a cure or a medication, but we do symptomatic treatment like all the over-the-counter cold medicines we have. The The difference is that this vi virus is one, deadly to old people, and two, so much we do not know about this particular strain. Right, man. Okay, so doc, let's, let's do this. Can you give, let, let's give the street level version <laughs> of what people should be doing during this time. What what are your recommendations? If you had to put a list of things together, tell folks what it is that they need to be doing. I, listen, I have been saying since early March, 
the number one recommendation, and this is the street level version, Roy, is wash your hands. <laughs> okay? Not your, why, oh, wash your hands. Because that is the predominant thing that will make you self inoculate, right? If I touch a surface that's contaminated and rub my eye or eat without washing my hand, I am going to self inoculate with something. So wash your hands is the number one recommendation that we have been um, putting out there since early March. Number two is stay home. I am not for sure what the struggle is with people staying home, but it's, it's a major problem. Just because you're not sick, like we said earlier, does not mean that it's not a problem. So it's very important to stay home. And then if you do go out, because you know, we still have to probably go get groceries, you should stay six feet away. And the six feet rule is because if someone coughs, coughs, sorry, not coughs, if someone coughs, the droplet can travel four to six feet. So you're in a safe zone if you're six feet away from someone if they accidentally cough or sneeze. So if you're going to go out for whatever reason, stay six feet apart from everyone. Um, and if someone is at your home who is sick, they need to self-isolate. Um, we are suggesting that before it even happens to make a plan. Have a designated space in your home, a room in your home that is the quarantine room just in case someone gets sick. Wow. So, let, you know, that I think that's something that you just explained is something that a lot of people also need to pay attention to. A lot of folks were wondering, what is it with the six to four to six feet? So it's, mm -hmm. it's that 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 with someone sneezes or coughs that those things normally travel, those droplets travel four to six feet. So that that's what keeps you outside of that zone. So that, that is some great information. Uh, we'll definitely make sure we put that up on the screen. And again, as it is, like she said, because this was one of the ones that I was wondering, trying to figure out from the very beginning, uh, wash your hands. It's like, why does... Wash your hands. Why is this such a, 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 an issue for people? <laughs> you know, we, we were thinking about it. Um, well, Dr. Newman, let's do this. Before, uh, before we get out of here, uh, one, I want to thank you for your time and everything. But tell the folks again a little bit more about your practice uh, give some contact information. I'll make sure we get all that information up on the screen um, and, and ways that, you know, if they have family members, because we, we will get out of this. You know, we, you know we're you know we looking at, mm -hmm. at this thing coming through. Uh, like I said, I, I told everybody, I said, if we can just get people at this point now to stay at home. And again, you stay at home through the month of May and just only go out when you're when it's absolutely necessary. It's necessary. You will be able to get a hold on it, at least of being able to, to, to shut down the transmission of it to people because it is, with that it being, is that is the hope yeah so yeah because with it being airborne i tell folks i'm like that's the piece that you have to realize when it's if it's there it's there you know and then it survives on surfaces you know i i heard somebody say that i could touch a surface that someone with infected touched yesterday and 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 would contract the, the virus so it's like you know this isn't something right. that, that just goes away so but tell us a little bit again about yourself and and uh let, let's go from there so what, before I tell you that, Roy, I do, I'm going to send you the um, CDC coronavirus hotline. This is a line okay. that the CDC has put together. For anyone who believes they are positive or have symptoms, um, please call the coronavirus hotline. I think they have testing sites where you can go get tested for the coronavirus um, and kind of give you information about next best steps. Um, so we, my practice is located in Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, the heart of it, in Buckhead, on Piedmont Atlanta's campus. The majority of physicians um, are, are offering telemedicine visits um, to see you um, if you're sick for whatever the reason, because we're trying to, of course, decrease the number of people coming into the healthcare settings. So my practice is here. Um, if you have a need, if you know the serious illness, um, like cancer or heart failure, COPD, HIV, um, that really needs help improving their quality of life, including symptoms around those diseases, give me a call. My office number is 04 590 0626. All right. Four. So say that one more time the number. I will. 404 590 0626. 
All right, and that'll actually that's actually going to be showing on the screen right now as folks are looking at it. So they they will have that information. Um, is there a? I guess they can call the office to get the tele the information for for them to get tele. Well, and I guess tele mm -hmm. right. So that it, okay. So great. So we'll make sure they do that again. Again, Dr. Newman, I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to our folks. Um, hopefully, you know, let's let's make sure we stay in touch with you. And as, as we get some information, and hey, if you ever come across information that you think the people need to know about, please reach out to me. We will get it on the air and get it out to our people uh, so that they can know, be safe, be healthy, so that we can get this thing, or at least try to get it somewhat under control so that we can get back to a form of our regular life. Again, Dr. Sharika Newman, founder and owner of Doctor in the Family here in Atlanta, Georgia, proud fellow Rattler, doing yes. what we doing what she does. So I definitely want to thank you again, Dr. Newman. You take care and have a great day. You too, Roy. Bye bye. The Human Voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational powerhouse intelligent and sincere that's the voice you need for your creative marketing process k-e-a-v-e-r-s-v-o-i-c-e.com covers voice covers voice covers voice.com always on all the time majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at MyMajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S.com. My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. Let's face it, shopping for insurance can be time consuming. That's why when it comes to your auto, home, and life insurance needs, make things simple and trust the experts at Allstate. They will help you get the coverage that fits your needs while helping you bundle your life, home, and auto policies. Bundling saves you money, sure, but it also saves you time so you can enjoy the things that matter most even more. Contact me, Tammy Haynes, your local agent, for a free personalized insurance quote. Allstate, are you in good hands? Q Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member.